This is Drink Talk, where we try to solve the world's problems one drink at a time. Each week in this podcast, the topics of today and tomorrow are discussed while we sample some of the finest libations known to man. Join us. We are your hosts, Brian and Britt. Check us out. All right, coming to you live down here at... Uh, why do Spirit I always, world. I always do that? I always do you that. You can Spirit never remember world. the name, which is sad, and we're here. So I know. Way it, to go. It's a place for beer. Fail It's a already. place for wine. It's a place for liquor. You should come down here and buy all that stuff. Spirit World. <laughs> Spirit for, World. For all your spirit needs. And joining us is uh, is Alex from Spirit World here. Yep. So you're the beer guy, aren't you? Yeah. Beer manager here. Nice. Yeah, nice. And we also have Derek from Ferns and Brewing Company. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down to our humble little town here in Nebraska. Oh, I love them. All the way from yeah. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's right. And you came in at the right time. You know, we're going to have some awesome weather today. Yeah. So. We, got in, uh, we got in between weathers mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully leaving when the roads are cleared tomorrow. I was going to say, you're not leaving tonight, are <laughs> no. you? Because, yeah, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a much better day. I for ice skated here. <laughs> that's, that's how icy it was this morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, that music's going. Okay, cool. So um, we have a few things going on here this week. It is Omaha Beer Week. This is the culmination. Yeah. Today is the uh, the last day of Omaha Beer Week, and I'm assuming that's why you're in town for the uh, the beer fest tonight, the Extreme Beer Fest. We'll get into that at the end of the program on uh, maybe t- talk about some tips about how to do a beer fest right. And, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> stay home. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stay home. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's stay home and drink a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and eat something before you come and eat something while you're there because there is, what, 300 beers you could try? Sample? Yeah. Something like that? I, I think there's like, there's like 65 breweries, I think. It's ridiculously amount of beer that is going to be consumed later. People right. always told yeah. me don't pregame in what's, we're, 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 what's yeah. going on here. Well, when you're an <laughs> Olympic athlete, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's fair. That's fair. You got to warm up. You got to stretch. You don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. want to pull something when you're out there. Uh, exactly. Well, and speaking of which, what yeah. are we? Uh, what are we drinking? What's the first on here, one Derek? here? Uh, we're drinking Shy Giant IPA um, from Fernson, obviously, seven um, percent, seventy IBU American IPA, uh, dry hopped with exclusively Mosaic uh, oh, hops. That's uh, a very popular. It is. It's. Uh, uh, nice and citrusy. Uh, right. There's a bit of Centennial yeah. in the mid edition in the kettle, so you get some of that citrus through um, mm-hmm. to the finish. Um, and yeah, it's uh, we like it. It's our it's our only you know year round IPA that we do right now. So, okay. Yeah. What NY Shy Giant? Um, so well, actually, before that, before that, let's uh, let's yeah. clinky and uh, why don't we do that? I have short arms. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a big table. I know, right? All right. Um, so yeah. So shy so giant. It started out just Ferns and IPA. Um, like a lot of breweries, we just. I we love just, an eleven o'clock beer. Yeah, it's my favorite. Especially kind of seven percent. You know, <laughs> starting off light. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like it's our, like the modern version of a pilsner, right? Like that's everybody has like IPA all the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, we started off uh, like most breweries, and uh, at least most breweries that started three to five years ago, um, and like our core lineup, we were just going to be like Ferns and style right mm-hmm. so they started out for instance ipa and uh so what is the ferns and style no just like ferns and oh, comma style oh, like that gotcha. was how we were going to name everything for oh, our core lineup just I like ferns and ipa ferns and farmhouse sale ferns and porter for instance you know okay simple and, names just yeah to... and then um we you know we did a we stumbled into lion's paw lager which is now our biggest selling beer um, and that one was supposed to be just a one-off batch because mm-hmm. uh, the lager takes a lot of extra time. We didn't like plan to do lagers as part of our business model. Had some open tank space brewed this Vienna lager that we've been kicking around for a while on our small system, and it went crazy. I mean, people just wanted more and more of it, and because it was a one-off, we gave it a name. I like the alliteration of Lion's Paw Lager, mm-hmm. and it's a really, you know, I'll just tell you it. It's a convoluted, weird story as to how I named it. I was like, uh, German beer. Um, uh, Sound of Music, mm-hmm. uh, and then like Edelweiss and whatever I get. Like, so I'm going down the rabbit hole in Wikipedia, and I get to Edelweiss, and it's in the same family as like Daffodils and Daisies, and the Latin name translates to Lion's Paw because oh. of the petal pattern. <laughs> and I was like, Lion's Paw Lager, nice. that works. Nice. And uh, so it was meant to be this one-off thing, so that's why we gave it a fun name or just gave it a name, and it stuck, and the beer went wild and and now you to change and, your business model yeah and then we're like <laughs> well people really grab on to having a name associated with you know like a, oh, it's sure. like a sub brand of Fernson, right and so that was actually probably the hardest thing we had to do was like give a name to something that already existed as something else you know so we kept the can identical we just kind of shrunk the ipa text and like squeeze squeeze shy giant in there um to to, to sort of 
ease that transition to like right. it's the same beer you've been buying we just yeah. put a name on there same color yeah. Yeah. Same and, uh, i was gonna yeah. say a, a couple months back we had you guys the IPA. beer yeah. ipa yeah. on and i was like it's the same can but it didn't say shy giant before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and all the drop shadows and stuff are removed it's a little cleaner now. when you're uh, um when your sales rep came in to tell me about uh, the Wagon Plane Porter when mm-hmm. it was dropping, she's like, oh, yeah, did you notice that you changed or that, that we changed it to Shy Giant? And I'm like, no, I didn't. So, like, we went over to the cooler, and I found my facing. And sure enough, the case I had just gotten that week said Shy Giant. I had so one subtle. Six pa- I had yeah. one six-pack from the last case that didn't. I'm like, oh, well, thank God I rotate my products. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, – um, so, uh, Fernson, uh, we'll just – we'll get into that. Fernson uh, is an amalgamation of my last name, Fernholz, and my business mm-hmm. partner, Thompson Blake Thompson is my business partner. Uh, we combined our last names Fernholz Thompson Fernson, mm-hmm. um, but we wanted we wanted something a little deeper than that. It's not a sexy or fun story to say. Oh, we just like slammed our last names together and named the company. Well, if it makes so, a word, yeah. yeah. It, may, it like well, and that's the other thing, right? So we got started. There were under two thousand brewers. Like when we, when we got our federal brewers notice, like three and a half years ago. There were under two thousand breweries in the country. Mm-hmm. We're now over six thousand. Right. Yeah. Um, but even with under under two thousand you couldn't have a name that was another brewery's name obviously or any beer they make Mm -hmm. or any winery and any wine brand they make or spirits and any sub brand that they make because the whole alcohol trademark thing is is one big umbrella and so we're like man you almost have to there's you know i don't remember two million three million words in the english language like you gotta almost invent a word at this point right Uh, which is why you're seeing such crazy names like if you uh wanted to start a candy store i'd call it suck it right yeah (laughs) Fair enough. Or a, 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 <laughs> if a restaurant, you know, you'd pay, put that in my mouth, you know, that'd be a oh, good Jesus. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We yeah. don't even want to go there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so. Uh, but good, good call going on the Fernson. Yeah, we invented the name. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't let you name the company. So that was no, one, of, one of the first things. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Well, well done. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we thought it'd be more fun to have a sort of a character, not so much a mascot as, as, as much as it's just a. Um, this this vessel that we put everything like all the people that are Fernson, like Fernson is the sum of all of our parts and, and then some is kind of how we envision it. So you'll see on the back of our cans the little quips um, that are actually part of a bigger story that at some point we'll release. Like we you know uh, uh, my brother in law is a really talented writer and he does some part time like so cop- these are copywriting and marketing. So these are he writes him. those, but those wow. that's like a pull quote from like like a two page thing like a story. And so we, we settled on Shy Giant for the IPA because um, even though it's 7% 70 IBUs, it's pretty approachable once you get to know it. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like really grabbing on the back of your tongue, like super astringently bitter. We late hop on that to, to make sure that we get the juiciness and the, the vibrancy from the hops, but not so much of that astringent back of the tongue bitterness. And so we, we figured, um, you know, like I think the quip is, you know, um, I see the fear it, of the, of the, yeah, I see. Se- I set my fear of the giant aside and found he was kind and his shoulders were wide. Yeah, so looking at the, by the numbers on the shelf, 7% 70, 70 IBUs, it's like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. That's, mm-hmm. that's a lot, but you give it a shot and you find it's, Which in it's the a world little gentler. Of, with the world, within the world of IPAs, 70 isn't, I mean, that's a little elevated from the style, but you know, it's it's within the range of the it style. Is. But it once is. you start getting into doubles and you're starting talking yeah. 90 Nine IBUs, yeah, yeah. or 90 it, IBUs, I mean, that's... Yeah, and it's it's in the modern, in the modern parlance, like the modern, like today IPA world, this is like, like a, a, a dinosaur. Like everything's juicy and like mm-hmm. zero IBUs, 30 IBUs, just like all whirlpool and dry hops in there. It tastes like hop juice. It doesn't have bitterness. And so... Um, ours is kind of old school at this point, but we like it for that reason. No, and I like it's very hop forward. You, you do get the citrusy notes, and you can mm-hmm. taste the uh, mosaic hops in there, the dry hopping that you do. I uh, I dabble in home brewing myself, and so my, one of my favorite things is uh, opening that fresh packet of hops and just oh yeah. You ever you ever brewed with mosaic? Uh, no, uh, when c- you, citra and uh, when you open a packet of mosaic, it smells mm-hmm. like garlic and onions. Oh Ooh. really? Really? Which comes through not at all in the beer. It's so like crazy how that transformation happens it like has it just has this like garlic onion chive you know green onion scallion like all those sort of family of things it smells like that i used to be a big gardener that would i would love that yeah Yeah. very Um, earthy but like the first time you use it like i'm not trying to make a vegetable medley uh (laughs) which nobody's done everybody's doing fruit why not try a vegetable medley (laughs) Um, zucchini beer i just saw there's some spirits on the the shelf in here that like are made with artichokes yeah made from artichokes and i was like 
Interesting. Well, and I, I do love <laughs> artichoke dip, but yeah. I don't know about having an artichoke. Maybe they beer. need to make a dry hop version of that with like a mosaic and some endives <laughs> or something. See like that. How that goes. I wouldn't want to compete with a Bloody Mary in the morning, though. Yeah. You know, mm. I mean, there's that vegetable right there. Yeah. Yep. So, it is. Yeah. But it's a food group. Yeah. Tomatoes are are actually a fruit. They are yeah. technically so, yeah. a fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and I don't like Bloody Marys. No. Yeah. yeah. Too salty for me. Mm. Only yeah. when I'm. It's like drinking liquid ketchup or like drinking like a ketchup drink for me. Like I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't like cold, savory things generally. Yeah. Right, and I've had like V eight, like the standard V eight, not appealing to me. Now they have like what was it, the V eight splash, which I was used more to juicy. love the splash, of yeah, like the splash. carrot juice with yeah. other stuff. But when it, I'm thirty thousand feet in the air, that's what I like to drink. Is <laughs> oh, see, I'm ginger ale. Ah. I'm on the plane. I drink ginger. Can ale. I get a spritzer <laughs> with something in it, or just a ginger ale? It depends um, on how but, long the flight is. Yeah, and, uh, or just where I'm, what I'm doing. You when, know, when you're in first class. Yeah, um, that's <laughs> never happened. <laughs> uh, we fly out of Sioux Falls Regional Airport, uh, Foss Field. First class is if you're the sitting in the first seat in the plane, but the plane holds thirty people. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're not flying in like a seven forty seven out of Sioux Falls. Right. So. Gotcha. Uh, so I may have missed that. Where you guys are located out of Sioux Falls here? Yes, right? I see that. Sioux okay. Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, so was, it's like I, a, what three hour drive from here? Yeah, roughly? pretty much exactly three hours. Um, you know, Sioux Falls is right on I twenty nine. So, and I was hoping to hit you because I was up in South Dakota just two weeks ago. I ended up going to uh, the the farmhouse brewing, um, but the timing was an issue for me because I was driving through Sioux Falls at like seven in the morning, yeah. and I was like, eh, I can't stop now. And then on the way back, it was like ten o'clock at night. It's like if we stop now, which would be okay timing, we're getting in at like two in the morning. Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah. Well, now now that we've talked, you just like have just to, shoot me a message. I'm, I'm there. there. If it's during the week, I'm there. I don't know, five six in the morning until five oh, six that, at night. Yeah, that so. would have been great. Just pop <laughs> pop in on the way up yeah. and just yeah. So. so so what's up with the uh, what's up with the guy on the label? Is that you? No, that's Fernson. Oh, okay, that's, yeah. that's Fernson. So yeah, that's, talk a little bit about that's, that. That's the embodiment yeah. of of our brand. So um, sort and there's of, a catchphrase, right? Uh, fine Fernson. Fine um, Fernson. Yeah, hashtag Fine Fernson um, on all of our stuff. We're um, uh, so I talked about like we came with the name amalgamation of our last names and we wanted to create a character around that um, as a better vehicle to tell stories because we envision our brand as a modern prairie storybook. So, um, you know, it's got some heritage kind of elements to it, um, but um, it feels right at home today as well. Right. Like the the cans are stark and simple Mm -hmm. and the design aesthetic that we go for is. Yeah, yeah, it's it looks like it could have been there 30 years ago, but it Mm -hmm. also is a bit modern because of the color palette and the lines. Right, the, um, and I like so the the two styles that I like. So like clown shoes yeah. has beautiful artwork on the cans, which is really really nice. And then this, I also like simplicity. Mm. It's that middle ground that gets it kind of yeah. gets lost on the shelf for sure. So either simple or do it well. Yep. And so we're um, excuse me. That's all right. No, that's all right. <laughs> we're drinking beer. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> we're uh, uh, so uh, you know my business partner Blake and I are both fans of of you know. Lord of the Rings, Tolkien's writings, like nice. kind of that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so we're like, all right, we're trying to envision who Fernson is when we're crafting this brand. Like, who is this guy? If we had to, like, paint a picture of him or, like, in words describe him, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the attributes were, like, Gandalf-esque, um, you know, a little bit of, like, a Don Quixote kind of, like, thing, a little little Johnny Appleseed, a little mm-hmm. bit of, you know, uh, John Henry, like, all these, like, Paul Bunyan, mythical creatures, bigger than life, right. bigger than some, you know, b- bigger than... Um, in the story always sort of grows, you know, every generation has a version of it. Like, so we envision this like timeless sage traveler, helpful individual that's always in the right place at the right time. And everybody seems to have a story about them, but they're all just a little different, Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> kind of like one of those things. And so like we envision them as timeless. So like your great grandfather had a story about him, but you also have your own story about this interaction you had yeah, with them. And so could be slightly different. Yeah. yeah. And so. Nice. We're um, so we're working on that. So we have got the stories and stuff that'll the full versions will come out eventually, um, and uh, but uh, that's where all the names come from. So Shy Giant IPA, uh, we talked about that. Uh, Wagon Plain Porter um, uh, comes from this. Uh, my business partner and his brother, um, who you know both work for us. Well, Blake is co owner and and his brother works for us. That's too bad. He um, uh, he's he, now he's at another beer. Fest. He's at another beer fest in Sioux Falls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we got Man, a lot you guys of those. Are going yeah. Who's running the Who's running the show down in Sioux Falls? Uh, luckily, we have a great staff. We have we just had our holiday party uh, beginning of January, mm-hmm. and like we don't like with our t- two tap rooms and like all the you know part time staff, full time staff. Like it's very not, and we have you know like Addie who lives down here mm-hmm. repping our brand. 
um, we're not all in the same room often enough. And so like we took a group photo and I counted it. I was like, we have 24 employees. That's awesome. Like 12 full time and 12 part time. And how long have you been a, a brewery? Cause I was trying to find that on your website. Yeah, and so three, a little over three years. We just celebrated wow, our three year anniversary yeah, of brewing. Um, Quite when you a said young you had, brewery. Yeah. yeah. And you have two locations. So I'm assuming one, one's the original brewing house yep. and, and tap room. And yep. then the other one I, I saw was downtown. Yep. It's just a, essentially a little beer bar. Um, oh, okay. That's Ferns and branded. Okay. Um, um, it's right like Ethan Railroad, downtown Sioux Falls, right on the railroad tracks. Yeah. Uh, we do fun stuff like train game. There's a train going by the window behind the taps. Like it's half off beers. Oh, nice. Like while the train's in front of the window. <laughs> nice. Um, so like it's, not like a, it's not like, a, yeah, it's not like a, it's not like a, it's not like a, uh, no, there's like actual trains. That oh, come. the actual. I people, thought you like had like, a little. No, like people when they were coming, they're starting yeah, to run. It's like, the like toy train. That yeah, like people. Back every once in a while, people get yeah. stuck on the wrong side of the tracks trying to get to us. Yeah. Well, as the trains come by, and they're like, oh, oh. This is so close. Because <laughs> oh. um, the, the train schedule is pretty erratic because uh, it's a switching yard. So it's not like they're just like coming through on a schedule. Mm -hmm. And so instead of doing a set happy hour or something like that, we're like, well, just any time there's a train blocking the window behind the taps. It's ha you know it's half off beer. Oh That's wow! Awesome. <laughs> so nice. it's just you know it's and, just and then, luck sometimes. Then the people that get stuck, they're like, no. I'm like not only can I not get to the brewery, I can't get to the half off taps. Yeah. I will get out of my vehicle. I will walk over there and, <laughs> and have that that one person that calls. It's like, yeah, I can see your tap room, but there's a train here too. So can you show I'm me there. a tap and put two <laughs> half price beers on there, please? Yeah. Hey, just have just them waiting have for us exactly. at the bar. There you go. I'll be there in like yeah. five minutes. We have a limit, one for each hand. You know, you can't just get... So I was about to ask, like, do you have those people that are like, oh, the train's here. Can I get seven beers? Yeah. And I'm just yeah. going to try to get One for each hand is the limit on the train game. We have rules printed up. They're on the wall. Nice. There's like 10, 10 rules the of the train, train game. game. I, I love it. Um, so yeah, we try to have fun. Like we're literally like, it's a flat iron style building downtown old mm -hmm. uh, built in 1920 uh, brick building that's nice. got that kind of angular shape yeah. and yeah, it's, we have it's we have one here in omaha that's actually called a flat iron okay and it's yeah, yeah the triangle it's, yeah it's got that shape and it, it's so the one side is the where it is because that's where the street is and the angle is perpendicular or parallel with the uh, railroad track next to it so oh, wow. it's like 12 feet outside of the one like the one wall of our place that the trains come by oh. it's so like is, that close. is your place kid friendly um so the brewery is family friendly dog Perfect. friendly because um, my son loves thomas the train so like if i come <laughs> up there you can sit out the window yeah. watch the trains be like tell daddy when the train's coming yep. so that i can get my half off beer <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're always family friendly uh at the brewery tap room the, you know where we we still make all the beer um, the downtown tap room, for instance, on Eighth, uh, we're kid friendly until seven eight o'clock at night. You oh, know, sure, you yeah. Know, you, kind of most bars, then you're like yeah. uh, your kids should be in bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't, we, don't try, we don't try to tell people how to parent, but it, yeah, yeah. that's sort of implied. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's just. Uh, and now the shenanigans will begin. <laughs> yeah, all kids must leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my daughter was in here at ten o'clock last night, so yeah. I mean. It, yeah. I think we classify as those bad parents. Well, no, 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 no. When, they're in, yeah, when their infants are on place. their own, yeah. it depends on how like, old your daughter is. Yeah, she, really, she's only she's only five months old, so she just sits in there and she just yeah. hangs out, and like no. we do what we want to do, and then this five. I this is kind of like a grocery store for alcohol. Yeah, you know, so all like, the staff here can, knows her too. Yeah, so. you can bring a kid in here; it's yeah. not a big deal. She just chills, and then she gets passed around and whatnot. Like the staffing here really likes her. So yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Very nice. I enjoy this. And we yeah, actually have some uh, nice, comments actually. from the viewing audience here. So there is uh, Scott actually said he loves the Ferns and Lion Paw that we had talked about earlier in the program. Yeah. So, um, mm. And then Blake uh, uh, gave us some cheers there. Oh, so nice. Gonna, cheers yeah. to you, Blake. So. <laughs> not uh, Blake Thompson. Oh, yeah, just yeah. different Blake. I was different, like, different Blake. Get to work. Go to the beer fest. <laughs> <laughs> Do your job. Quit checking your phone. <laughs> So now, uh, back to the brewery, um, because you're expanding, and I know you're the largest in Sioux Falls area. Have you... Really? That's awesome. Have you become the Good largest job. in South Dakota yet? We haven't seen the BA numbers from mm -hmm. like from 2017, the production numbers, but mm -hmm. I, I think so. Um, you're right there. Yeah, yeah. it was... Uh, Crow Peak is one of the older breweries in the state. They're mm -hmm. out in Spearfish mm -hmm. on the, in the Black Hills. Yeah, um, which are beautiful with the snow on them. I drove yeah. through. I was like, wow. I, I like them. I like the... Black Hills and the Badlands, yeah. but with snow on them, I was like, "That's cool." Very much so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we love having that part of the state. Um, like to vacation and go out there and fly fish and stuff. It's it's yeah. kind of cool that it's still in South Dakota, but it's six hours away. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Crow Peak's been the the biggest for for a long time. They've been around. Um, I don't know, 2007. I want to say they're a little oh, right before the recession. That's yeah. that's yeah. got a 
I'm yeah. surprised they lasted through that. Because oh, they beer's kind of recession proof, you know. Well, but as a new brewer, <laughs> as a new brewery, because one of my favorite bars here in town, uh, it was the Lauder Ton, and they opened sure. right in 2008, right before the recession hit, and yeah. they were just so new, and they just couldn't weather the storm. Yeah, I mean, in startup mode, it's tough. I think I want to say it's 2007, but I have to double check that. Mm-hmm. Um, when they started, it was it was really small, like you know, five barrel system. Which is a great or, way or to start. Three barrel system, whatever they started on, mm-hmm. and and just in their tap room, really, and like they've grown much bigger from there. They're I think they're actually distributed down here they as are. well crow peak yeah um and uh and a couple other states like you know north dakota and montana um but uh they uh they were doing 20 you know 2200 2000 barrels something like that a year uh, we did 3600 barrels last year um and so i think we're there as the biggest i don't like it's not like uh, like a badge or anything that right. i put up there it's it's a it's a fact it's it's numbers mm-hmm. um my my goal is to to make the best beer possible right. not necessarily the the most volume right our, you know, our father has had a, a really good adage on that he said i am uh, i i don't seek being the biggest but i am quite content being the best yeah there you go That's speaking good. of tap rooms didn't you do a tap takeover here just the other day what was that tuesday, yeah, tuesday night nice yeah we tapped uh we tapped you guys as lion's paw um, the Esme Saison, and then your your Forty Winks after wine, I think is the full name. Yeah, we uh, actually it's uh, wine barrel aged Forty Winks because the TTV said we couldn't say after wine because people would get confused that uh, there's wine, like wine in it. Well, it's and speaking barrel of barrel aged yeah. beer in wine barrels. Yeah, and so it's yeah. it's red wine barrel aged Forty Winks. And you guys do all your own blends on the wine or something like that? Oh, we don't do anything with wine, but we get the or yeah, the, yeah, 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 the barrels with the barrels. Yeah, so we have hundred um, ish barrels in house. Uh, wine mostly some spirits barrels what uh what kind of barrels are you getting for your wine like uh, they're all coming out of, or? uh so all the all the barrels uh wine barrels we're getting come out of napa and they are red wine red table wine well no they're they're like real red wine so they're cab <laughs> barrels they're they're uh pinot noir barrels gotcha. um we have a few sherry uh or not sherry uh, uh port barrels and then uh uh we have some red zin barrels uh that were formerly Chardonnay barrels. Mm-hmm. So everything we have has some red coloration to it, the barrels themselves uh, or the insides of them. Um, really hard uh, out of Napa, at least at the, the wineries that we work with to get barrels, um, to get the white wine barrels. I want to mess around with some white, actual white wine barrels, but almost all of them are a, using... a lot sweeter, you know. Well, like, well Chardonnay is super dry white yeah, wine. Right. So Lighter like, profiles. Yeah, just more delicate, mm-hmm. right? And, and not really the tannic stuff that you pull out because it's off the skins, right? So that's... Mm-hmm. We don't have to get into wine. This is a beer podcast. <laughs> um, well, actually, it's... All right, it's a drinking podcast. Exactly. Yeah, we can get into everything. But, say, uh, if we got to go get wine, we, yeah. I've got wine out there, yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm waiting to step yeah. into these crowds. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking. I see you guys are empty over there. Yeah, right? so we're... Um, uh, but the... Um, the Zinfandel, the red Zin that they, they do out there, is mm-hmm. all stainless steel, but then like a month in oak just to kind of give it a little something. Like and so they reuse, woodiness. So they reuse those shard barrels for that. And so uh, like we're like, don't have a source for white wine barrels right now. So, interesting. Um, but yeah, and then we got some spirits barrels here and there that we age some stuff in. All, right, all well, three kegs go. that we use on Tuesday, we didn't kill them, so they will be back on. And I definitely suggest like when we put that that Russian Imperial back on, people need to get on. That stuff was so good. It's crazy. Who has? Uh, is that the one you gave me? Yes. It's really yeah. dark. Oh, what yeah, you say yeah. it was 10, good. 10 something percent? It's like 10.3, 10.4. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I want to say when I put it up on the menu, it said 10.3. Yeah. It's uh, 13 months in red wine barrels. Like it's, it's got a lot of wine character to it. It's got this like tannic, like bright red, currenty kind of like red fruit mm-hmm. um, thing. And, uh, but other under than that, so the, the bottles of it, that will be coming hopefully in a week or two. Ooh, um, 750. It's just know. like the Esme <laughs> bottles. Um, they, uh, because we re-fermented them, like did bottle conditioning on them, um, just luscious and smooth and silky, and the the tap versions as close to that as we could get. I loved it. It had such a nice dry finish, which I mean, when, because when you hear Russian Imperial, you think kind of dry anyway. But then like you picked up all those tannic notes at the end, like it it was you know, really we love good. sound effects. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, totally fine. Yeah, um, this let is the, a drink- let, yeah. Let them know that we're actually drinking stuff here. Yeah. yeah. So what what are you uh, what are you tapping here on the uh, the cro- so crawler service? Let's let's uh, nice, while we get uh, into nice that, can you talk about your Very is nice that color. newer for you guys now? The crawler yeah, service? the crawler is. I didn't even know you guys did couple, crawlers. I think we've had I think we've had the labels and been able to like fill them for like two to three weeks now, like very new. So what we've noticed um, here in Omaha is the uh, the people. Uh, they're moving in Nebraska. They're moving away from growlers, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate because they have those uh, drink tank 
Sure. Well, I Mystic always like 64 like ounces compared to 32, yeah. though. You but, know, uh, I'm a, I like more than less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I like the versatility of the aluminum. You can take it wherever oh, yeah, you can absolutely. go. Crowlers, they're, they're just, you know, because we sell growlers here, and I love it, but crowlers are just, like, they're just... They're more efficient. They are. Yeah. And, it, and if you're doing it right, like, so we can beer. We mm-hmm. know what it's like to can beer to do it well. And so we were hesitant on the crowler because people are going to treat it like a can. Mm-hmm. And so I installed Put a it, bag uh, around it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I installed a standalone uh, CO2 line uh, with a drop tube and stuff. And so we're, pur- have to. we're yeah, so we're purging, you know, we're, you know, rinsing, purging, uh, filling, uh, you know, pushing beer and foam out. Like mm-hmm. we're filling them real full, like trying to minimize the oxygen to the nth degree mm-hmm. but once you crack it like that's it you got to kill it exactly yeah. and that's the nice thing about the crowler mm-hmm. versus the growler is some people do the reseal put it in the fridge thing, which doesn't like, always oh, work yeah <laughs> but but mine have the co2 yeah on, and then you're so. good yeah yeah yeah, you, yeah so i was advantage. wondering about that i was at uh this major the other day and they take a a, a wand and and kind of spray something inside of it what is that all about do we is it is it liquid or gas like, it's gas I okay oh. it should like be CO2. co2 okay so they do a little co2 inside of that mm-hmm. and then fill up. Yeah, CO2 is much heavier than air, so it's going to go to the bottom. And if you're using a, 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 a like a growler filling tube of some sort that will get you to the bottom, you're filling under a blanket of CO2 and pushing that all the way out till there's so the nothing never but touches foam it. in there. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, that's awesome. you're not getting those oxidative reactions that taste like paper, sherry, I guess, wet dog, whatever you want to call it. And I guess <laughs> we should talk cardboard. about the uh, what crowlers are for those. That, yeah, it's a, kick, it, it's a 32 it ounce. Well, you can get different sizes, but ours well, are a 30, yeah. 32 ounce can growler. Crowler. Yeah, I was going to say growler for, glass. Yeah, yeah, growler can. Registered trademark, Oscar Blues. Yep. The word crowler is theirs. Yep. They invented it. They they started really? it. Really, Oscar yeah. Blues did. Yeah, with with in partnership with Ball Corporation huh. that makes the cans. Interesting. Um, but you actually, when you want to order a crowler machine, there's a few others on the market now. You but like ours Oscar is Blues. the like you order it from Oscar Blues. Wow. Like So ours is the Oscar Blues crowler machine. Nice. Um, they do sell labels as well, but mm-hmm. um, we have an amazing designer in house that does all of our stuff. That I like this. This yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. you, you guys' crowlers <laughs> are sweet. This is the first time I'm seeing. Them. I, like, yeah. I didn't even know you I like guys had them, but yeah. these are awesome. We actually, I should have brought some down. Maybe Addy. Uh, we we actually did this same pattern, but not in color, just in white on our mm-hmm. new can glasses. So this is, for instance, EDC, like everyday carry. Um, oh, so like I, I'm stuff, a big EDC guy. Yeah, so like stuff that he might have on oh. him. Um, I you know, just, some of it's obnoxious. You know, he probably didn't carry around a propeller from an old plane, but like, you know, it's... Well, <laughs> we, I mean, we we've dragged into playing Porter. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the beer on him or when something. I, when <laughs> I saw this guy right here, and now I see all of this stuff here, yeah. I'm reminded of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, <laughs> and the guy that had the coconuts, he's like, he ran yeah. away, he ran away. It's yeah. like, yeah. you know, it's How'd tying you it all How get the coconuts? Blackbirds must have been or something like that. Sparrow. Sparrows. sparrows, that's yeah, right. Sparrows from a, like, is it like an African, African or European sparrow? Yeah, 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 African sparrows. They're migratory. Halfway yeah. through the show, the he's like throwing creature. birds over with tied on coconuts. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's got to talk to the Frenchman. Yeah. <laughs> Your mother was a hamster. Well, I'm ready for this. This is, this is yeah, what yeah. I'm ready for. Yeah, cheers. So. Cheers. So cheers. Good. cheers, fellas. Oh, Ooh, man, I like the. Am I the only one that puts the glass back down the table before I do That's bartenders that do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fruity. Yeah, that this is almost, super fruity. This almost tastes like a uh, hefeweizen. Um, it's got that kind of clovey banana character in yeah, it. Yeah, it does. And it has 6%. like a silky kind of, um, you know, Very, the mid-palate's kind of juicy guava mango kind of thing. And then like uh, and silkier because right. this one does have lactose in it. So fair warning for any lactose intolerance at the table here. <laughs> Everyone um, just took yeah. a drink. Oh, yeah. no, I can't do that. <laughs> no, it's I fine. mean, even if you're like severely lactose intolerant, it's not like you're going to tip over. It's just like no one wants to be around you later. <laughs> no, the, um, <laughs> you, t- you taste the creamy. It's, it is yeah. a creamier flavor. And like so. The, from this is idea. something that uh, Blake's been working on, uh, my business partner. So this um, is something that the public can't get yet. Yeah, they can get it at our brewery. Like, gotcha. This was a part of a one-barrel pilot. So I'd have so to there were, like, South Dakota. There to was it. less than two half barrels of actual sellable beer. Of oh, gosh. <laughs> um, and so this is uh, – so the quest is sort of like his quest to make a, a hazy pale ale mm-hmm. or IPA that, it's, it's that we like. second quest. Yeah. So this is probably the fifth or sixth one he's brewed, the second one we deemed worthy to put on tap. Hmm. Um, gotcha. we, we dump a lot of beer, um, cool. and we're proud of that. Because um, you don't want to put something out there that no, you wouldn't want to do. We want yourself. to stand behind everything that we, we that's brew. Not, that's a good philosophy. Yeah, I mean, I dumping one that. barrel's all day. That's easy. Oh, yeah. We've dumped 30 barrel batches before. Just like It hurts Ouch. every time, but oh, it's yeah. like, oh, it's so much better to be going down the drain than to ruining public perception oh, out sure. there about what Fernson produces. So 
um, yeah, we're very proud of our QA, QC program, and it's just getting better every day. So um, we're getting more and more equipment for that. Um, like, well, and every yeah. brewery needs that. They need a good quality control. It is, and, and you know, we're we're very adamant on, on product dating. We're trying to get better. Our printer for our canning line sometimes messes up, but we've just moved it to in front of the fill, so it's a little cleaner, crisper print, and so the, those will start trickling down here soon. Sweet. Um, we're very adamant, like, people, consumers should know, and store managers should know, what that product like when it was canned oh yeah right Fresh, freshness and when the brewery thinks it's best before yeah. so we do both packaged on and drink by yeah, you guys kinda, cans they they got a pretty dark marking on it i can clearly tell yeah like, when I, you packaged it and when, when well, you're I, supposed I, to drink i'm it glad by. you brought that up because like back when i first started drinking beer um i was drinking you know bud lights and coronas and all that sort of stuff yeah, and we all started with, yeah we all yeah. started with that <laughs> and then brian actually brought me on the ipa scene uh, but now, since I've been on the IPA scene for uh, 10 years now, um, I'm starting to look at, yeah, when was it brewed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, give me give me a brew date. And I hate when I grab a bottle and I look all over it and I'm just like, is it on the packaging? No, it's not on the packaging. Yep. And, and I, there's no brew date on it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, tell like me when you did this. It's, right? it's like I understand it because like the automated printers are not cheap. Mm-hmm. And so you have to sort of draw your lines as a small startup brewery what you want. But like, I guess like... I, I'm a little bit idealistic about it. Like, I mean, if you can't afford the printer thing and or you don't want to a invest silver, in that, a silver get, sharpie or, and just or write get, it on there. get the, the gun that the grocery stores use to put oh, like prices sure. on that you can, you put a, you can put a date or like that's on a loaf of bread sometimes like the date thing, yeah. right? Just boom, like, boom, boom. And like oh. do that on the six pack at the bare minimum, you mm-hmm. know, like do it on the pack deck, do it on the, on the side of the cardboard. If it's bottles, like at least put it somewhere on there the day you packaged somebody it. Knows, yeah. So somebody in it, like for us, it's part of our, you know, part of our quality assurance is knowing, like if somebody has a problem with one of our beers and they put it on untapped with, you know, they, they're saying something heinous or, is, you know, something's off. Right. Uh, or uh, they post a picture and it doesn't look right. Um, we can reach out to that person. Like, what's it say on the can if you're drinking it out of a can? You know, like what, like which batches that go back, look at whatever, you know, like see if it's within date even. Like, you know, it happens. Like our distributors do a great job trying to keep the product out there fresh and store managers do a great job rotating, making sure you know we're, we're selling through the older stuff before the right. newer stuff and and uh but every once in a while stuff falls through the cracks and like mm-hmm. we'll get a post like oh, this doesn't ta- i love your farmhouse sale this doesn't taste right and like oh it's over a year old yeah. Yeah. oh yeah oh, that way past the way past that right but our farmhouse is awesome at like a year oh, old yeah it's a, i mean it's a saison like that, it's, gonna it's just like that it, it, <laughs> but it's like it's a four and a half percent saison so like it doesn't have it doesn't have really good legs for mm-hmm. aging, but it's in a can, so like it's in the it's like ideal stable. environment. It's pretty stable. It's just going to sort of mellow out. It's not going to have as vibrant of flavors, right? right. Um, but what's, yeah. what's your take on the? Because uh, I've noticed a, a growing trend in uh, people that are ha- having uh, like a cellar, uh-huh. but not for wine, for yeah, beer. For beer. Yeah, I think um, well, beer's meant for drinking, but right. yeah, there's some there, there's some fun <laughs> bottles uh, like sours to sit around, age um, better. Yeah, wild ferment, yeah. Uh, you know, like something that is unpasteurized this sour good. beer. Really this good. would get uh, me in trouble. <laughs> this is really good. Yeah, it yeah. tastes a little bit like more like juice than beer, yeah. yeah. Time, mm-hmm. I was sitting on, like, obviously not today. If it was like 55 degrees on a patio, oh, God. Yeah. Well, okay. last night I was drinking uh, uh, the, the super juice. The super, uh, yeah. super juice. Super juice. From and Cross this, Train. This Those is, guys are awesome. This yes, is they are. Yeah. Yeah. very comparable and uh, delightful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, we're, uh, we're excited about... Um, developing that further and I, actually we just invested in a proper pilot system that's a five barrel um uh, system so our brew house is 30 barrels um so we brew 930,000 gallons at a time um into 30 <laughs> barrels 930,000 gallons uh, no 932 a thousand oh you know, like somewhere, be, somewhere <laughs> between <laughs> there <laughs> like, wow. give, or, give or take a couple barrels <laughs> yeah um not you don't have a million barrel system yeah no we don't have that yet um but no so before like so this is brewed on our one barrel like direct fire essentially like a bigger homebrew rig than most people have what happened with your last one off the uh yeah the lager yeah Yeah, so and so uh you're batting two for two yeah we still we still brew we still brew almost every week on our one barrel system um and and the ones that we like we put on tap in the tap room and get feedback and iterate on them and kind of work on them until there's something we like and find a spot in the production schedule to brew 30 barrels like 30 barrels is a lot of beer mm-hmm. oh, that's yeah. our smallest brew size for a production batch right now and then so nearly a thousand gallons or if it was an all in half barrel 60 half barrels of beer or you know uh 186 barrels like it's a lot of beer yeah. and so to try to move that especially something like this that should be consumed pretty fresh um 
it just wasn't feasible to release some of these things in larger batches because we don't want old beer. You know, we don't want it going dead in our cooler or on the shelf. We want to sell it. We want people to enjoy it. And Absolutely. so that five barrel system is going to allow us to keep more variety in both of our tap rooms, as well as put more uh, one-off and specialty beers out in the market. Um, and with that, we've invested in an inline labeler uh, for our canning line mm-hmm. so that we can, uh, instead of getting printed cans all the time, which is 200,000 cans at a time you have to order, mm-hmm. um, we can now do theoretically batches as small as a one can. You know, like we what? just you know, put a label on it, <laughs> yeah. do a silver can, and you see that trend happening more and more. But we want to just try to stay as relevant as we can and, you know, still keep with that core lineup that we have that are just clean, we think, well represented, re- re- well representative versions of yep. those styles. Keep those always, and then with you know the stickered series of cans, mm-hmm. you know it's the stuff that we're it's a whim, it's a fancy, it's the thing that we're 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 excited about right now. We want you to taste this thing that we've made, and and um, you know who knows the next Lions Paw might come out. Of that. Funny you bring up stickered cans. Uh, we just <laughs> had Mitchell on from Nebraska Brewing Company. Yeah. He's one of their head brewers, and uh, he brought on one of the uh, it, I, he took it out of his case and it, it was the ipa i know the green can and like everyone knows the green can but then he turned the can and it had a sticker on it red sled red sled yeah, yeah. and he's like well we put these out in select market areas but people were very confused because they were thinking it was the ipa and even though the sticker was on there people saw the can and thought this isn't an ipa it's yeah. like no it's not an ipa it's the red sled we just had cans lying around we just used that one yeah right? that's i mean it's I've seen it done well, and, and, and I haven't seen that one, but uh, they know what they're doing down there. Well, it's just, they, they don't sell it, it as the with the sticker on there. That's just more for the tasting for oh, the, the store managers. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's but the store manager was yeah. very confused. Yeah. Like, I'm used to seeing expecting that. Expecting an IPA, but it wasn't I just it. had that uh, Monday. Um, uh, the gal from Rar and Sons was in here, and she was showing me her new. From Rar and Sons? Yeah, Rar and Sons. Oh, yeah, Sons yeah, I like that. Fort Worth, Texas. Good stuff. And uh, she was showing me the new one that they have that's kind of, uh, coming. I do believe they'll be at Extreme Beer Fest. Oh, yeah. I do believe yeah, so. Yeah, they but just launched up here. They have their beer called Adios Pantalones. But she had it in. <laughs> I don't remember which skew it is, but she had it in a blue can, and she's like, and she like hands it down, and I'm like, I've, I've had this before. And she's like, oh, no, 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 it's actually it, it's a whole different beer. We just had, we, we had this can. Yeah. And sure enough, I poured it. I'm like, yeah, this is not the same beer that this can is supposed to be. Yeah. So, Right. Very confusing. Yeah, we yeah. Um, in our early days, like we would just beer gun twelve ounce bottles by hand, wow. and like and then have a not for sale, like Very not labor for sale intense. sample yeah. only sticker to put on there to make it legal, you know, to yeah. like bring into an account, and and uh, that's you know Blake and I would like all right, we got to do a couple cases of twelve ounce bottles for the sales guys, you know, like we just sit there and yeah. beer gun it. <laughs> um, we actually did some of our. Um, you know, GABF entries last year. We obviously didn't win anything, but we entered some beers. Yeah. Um, we did a few of those uh, with Beer Gun as well. We still still use that. Are this we going to bring any of this to market? Um, at some point when this graduates into being because that the fu- yeah the, the we're, flavor we're, we're tweaking oh, it so we're tweaking good. it like that's why it's the second que- like eventually it, when it's done I hope it's just called the quest and then I could really beer, I could right? drink this all day as, as, yeah, as in the as in the cooking world you're creating the roux yeah, yeah we're, you know? The, the, or the, the mash, the stock, yeah. The mash. Be, yeah. And uh, yeah. so we're uh, we're toying with it, and there might be a few versions of it. Like, um, I think my goal, and I think Blake's goal, is to come up with. So this one has lactose, and as we're playing with that a little bit, mm-hmm. but come up with a base version of this without lactose that tastes what we want to it taste, and then we can do a lactose version. We can do a different dry hop version. We can do a version with fruit and a vanilla bean and lactose, and be a milkshake IPA. You know, like yeah. so. Try to find that hazy base that we like, yeah, and then be able to take it five different directions. Find the base, and then just start throwing adjuncts into it. Yeah. And the ones that work, it's like, hey, that's like, quest with yeah. these yeah. things, right? That's my favorite to hold up a beer yeah. and just look at it. And you yeah. go, oh yeah, yeah. Like that's when you can't taste good, <laughs> when you can't see through it, that's that's yeah. usually a, a yeah. pretty good sign. And so, yeah. it's yeah, stable haze. Um, so it's just like an, a semi opaque yellowish liquid right yeah, a light it's, orange it's, there's not like um, floaties or anything. right it's yeah. not uh, it's not this is all protein and mm-hmm. and stuff that's making that haze it's not a yeast sam- sample in a cup it's, it's not you're saying it's good it's for you sludge. it's got protein in it yeah. <laughs> i did all, it's all beer has you. protein in it that's what makes your head oh perfect i did have a uh, out in wisconsin i did have a beer and i as i always do i always pour it into a glass mm-hmm. and uh, it had all the yeast stuff in there uh-huh. and it was just like floaties and the beer oh, tasted was it like snowflakes it looked gross. Okay, I mean, well, like, it, so yeah. if it has like 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 chunks kind of floating throughout yeah, it, that's... Um, it's uh, it's oftentimes like um, I just lost the word. Um, Things uh, and stuff. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, 
um, it'll come back to me. Yeah. But there's a term for it, and it's it's actually uh, breakdowns of things that happen because the beer went warm and cold. Yeah, and for um, me, like the flavor of it, I like the flavor of the beer. Yeah. But when I looked at it in the glass, like at the end of a, of a night in a bar, yeah, like when they take like their newbies uh. and they pour all the liquid that's left in the mats and they make you take a shot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was the local college bar in, in Brookings where I went to SDSU. Uh, we did have uh, and they, uh, yeah, we had an issue. At, uh, I, I'm doing, so right now I'm doing Wi-Fi hotspotting and all that stuff, and I touched my phone, and it was all like, Wi-Fi hotspot down. I'm like, uh, what? Oh, no. That's all right. Now we're back up and running. It's no big deal. Oh, so oh, okay. Like three seconds I was out, and we're back on. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is part two. Right? Yeah. Technical difficulties, yes. um, but only for the Facebook Live audience, I assume. Yeah. Right, yeah. This, exactly. We'll splice it together with the, uh, exactly. the people that are actually uh, you know listening to this on Wednesday when I release. Yeah. Yeah, well, we never lose audio. Yeah. So audio is being recorded separately. Knock on wood. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, no, don't knock well, too hard because yeah. then it bangs the mics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I like, accidentally did that earlier, and I like hit, I, and I heard it. In my, I'm like, oh. I listen to the Steal This Beer podcast. Mm -hmm. um, Augie Carton from Carton Brewing out in New Jersey does. Um, where they drink blind out of like sunglasses. Like, oh, really? The guest brings a beer that they have no idea what it is, and him and his counterpart John Hall, who's a beer author, um, taste it blind and talk about what it is, not what it should be, what they thought it should be, what they heard, what they stood in line for. Just evaluate this beer blindly, and um, and it's a pretty good podcast, like half hour once a week. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but they you know they recorded a bunch of podcast episodes when they were in. Uh, Colorado recently for the Great American Beer Fest. No, oh. it, well, it might have been around. There. I, they were in Colorado summer recently. It was for something. Um, it was for something, and uh, they recorded like Black Project and like just like all of these amazing breweries. Like it recorded episodes with them, and they lost it all. Oh, oh sad man. day. Like the SD cards or something. Like like everything just crapped out. They lost all like like five episodes worth of stuff. So so uh, when, knock on wood. Yeah, Brits, <laughs> we, we have a story. We, on we that have one. a story on that. Brian and I, when we first got started, this is that we're going on our second year now. Nice. Congratulations. Um, thanks. Uh, he came to me and he was like, we're going to do this show. Let's, you know, drink on it. I'm like, well, you had me at drink, so no problem with the show. <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, he came over. Uh, it was right before Christmas, I believe. And we just wanted to test the mics. We wanted to make sure everything was okay and, like, we could f flow and it would be easy. And so we did about an hour. And then we we're like, oh, yeah, we should, you know, this is going to be fine. No problem. Well, then hour became two hours and two hours became three hours. And then we finally hit stop. Well, I had a trial version program of Vector 3 that I use for my audio recording. And I bought the, I was like, all right, cool. We're going to do this show. Let's buy the real version. You know, it was $8. It's no big deal. Yeah. Um, when I bought the, 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 the true version of it, it erased the trial version, which erased my audio recordings, which was ridiculous. It's I'm like, no, it should be in a folder, right? But it, it yeah. wiped its own folder and yeah. created a new folder. Sad day for a sad trash panda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Technology is great. You didn't when have a time machine on, you can just go back. Well, and it's, well, we also have a double redundant system here, too, because sometimes I accidentally forget to hit save. Yeah. Why, Why you, you hit no save? Hit no save. <laughs> I, uh, at, at my house, at, down in my basement, uh, I, he's got a little poster that he drew up. He's like, Why you hit no save? <laughs> because we, we lost, a, like, we recorded a whole podcast. And this was before we were actually putting up it on iTunes yeah. and recording yeah. the video and all that. And, uh, so we did one after the Super Bowl, and Britt was pretty well lit during yes. that one. Atta boy. Yeah. Well, it was after the Super Bowl. Proud of you. So he forgot to hit save yeah. after we were done, and we lost that whole podcast. But I was like, but hey, he, whatever. I mean, we can always yeah. redo it. We probably one. shouldn't have done that one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But now we have a double redundant system because now we have Facebook Live, and we are also auto, uh, recording the audio as well. So if for some reason I lose the audio recording, I can go on Facebook Live and you know just pull the audio pull the just audio basically pull that. everything from there yep. Yep. yep cool and we went on a tangent there yes we do <laughs> <laughs> my, life, my life is full of tangents excellent yeah. excellent well let's bring it back to the beer so yeah. Yeah. Can, can we talk a little bit about uh, your the year round seasonals and limited release a little bit I know we kind of got a little yeah. bit into that um, so year round is pretty much what I, I call what we do in cans so mm -hmm. um, we started with uh, farmhouse ale which is a petite saison four and a half percent French saison uh we like to think it has all the flavor and complexity of a proper like bigger saison, but with a lower alcohol session package. And so that one and Shy Giant we started with. We then or just me. regular IPA, and yeah, then renamed yeah, it. renamed as Shy Giant, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we uh, we added in Lions Paw Lager. Um, we kind of touched on the story about oh, that yeah. and, wildfire. And some people seem to be fans yeah. of that. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good it's a 
great beer to meet people where they're at in the upper Midwest, we found. Mm-hmm. We didn't do that on purpose. It wasn't because of market research. It was we brewed a German-ish Vienna lager. Which is great in the Midwest. Yeah, and, and we're like, Dawson let's, let's do it one time. It's got a little yeah. copper color to it, but it drinks pretty light and crisp. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, 4.6%, pretty approachable. And it just like, it went crazy. And so, like, that one happened. And then we've done uh, two more cans that are uh, the shrink sleeve cans, um, which is Curio, our Berliner Weiss style ale. Um, so, you know, tart, uh, tart German wheat beer, mm-hmm. um, 4% alcohol. And then Wagon Plain Porter. Uh, which used to be at one point just Ferns and Porter and nice. gave it a name. So, yeah, those are the five that are pretty readily available. Now, the, uh, Germ- the Curio the- and the, the Wagon Plain ebb and flow a little bit because of the seasonal nature of people. Like, Curio doesn't sell super well in the winter, mm-hmm. uh, and Wagon Plain doesn't sell super well in the summer. And so. And you've got that all figured out. Yeah, we brewed it ever- When Curio uh, first showed up, like. I like got in a case and it sold and so I'm like okay well I'm gonna get more and I got a case the next week and then it was out for like six or seven weeks and I was like this isn't one that everybody wants right now and I, know. I can't get it back we've, we've hopefully fixed that so we in the last few months we've been brewing Curio like trying to get ahead of it we it's a it's a kettle sour um, it's a it's a phenomenal beer. yeah um, but it, because of the process of making it because we have to let the lactobacillus create that lactic acid and get it tart and and then boil it to kill the lactobacillus and then add a little bit of hops we can call it beer it's like four to five four or five ibu somewhere in there um very very low yeah just enough to call it beer essentially just knock the edges off of it and then like um and then we you know ferment it with our house ale yeast and and then it's the beer right but it's there's so many variables in it because it's like this four (coughs) sorry it's all right it's all right Things happen. Yeah. Hydrate. Yes. Stay exactly. hydrated. You, you've yeah. been you, Mr. Gab over there, and that's all right. Well, yeah, we, nothing wrong with that. We all got extreme <laughs> some couple hours, too, out. so stay hydrated. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, no, I uh, I think that having, like, the mainstays uh, that they have, they, they've got a really good selection of what's available currently. They're, they're five SKUs. They move really well for us. They have phenomenal price points. Mm-hmm. Um, they're incredibly approachable beers. Um, I've been behind, for instance, ever since they showed up because their their sales rep has always well, been. Well, they've been here since July in Omaha, yeah. right? Yeah, so. um, their sales rep is very, very good to me. Um, she's very friendly. Her name's Addie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which we tried I, to get her on the program, but yeah, she, she said no. That's, that's um, all right. No big deal. Sad day. Yeah, so we got... Uh, we we had the, shy. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the Fernson event Tuesday because she's she's been showing a lot of love to our store. She lets me know when things are coming in. Like when when Curio was out, she was coming in and letting me know like every couple weeks. Like, hey, Curio is coming back. They're just yeah. they're just working on it. Um, Speaking of that, what can you get in the store right now? So I've got Shy Giant. Um, Perfect. The, the wagon plane porter, the farmhouse, um, the the Curio. And the, the the fifth one, I the 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 lion's paw. Perfect. And then Ooh. I have bo- I still have bottles of their barrel aged Esme, which is their red wine barrel aged saison. Uh, I sampled some of that out on Tuesday, and people loved it. It is it is phenomenal. Um, I'm stoked that we have bottles of it. Uh, there's still plenty here for people that want it. I definitely suggest like if you're a big fan of of saisons, give this guy a try because there is so much complexity into it. It, it's so well done. <laughs> now, now that you're talking, I, I, I know that I do want this next crowler because I've been staring at it and <laughs> like checking out the name. You lush. <laughs> but, I mean, if we get to it, I would love to try that Lion's Paw. It, it just sounds I've yummy. Got, I had, and, you know, we've already pushed through most of the six-pack of Shy Giant. I mm-hmm. have no, we can, I've got Lion's Paw out there in the cooler. We can go grab it. Perfect. Yeah. We can move on to the next one. I mean, I understand <laughs> that you've got to drink yours, but yeah, I get, it's all right. Everybody else is almost finish. empty here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a slow guy today. I'm it's talking, all right. Talk, talking too much. Nothing wrong with that. And good sound effects. Those are. I great know. Sound. I love it. The sound of like a, a good, well-filled crawler opening. You know, did you ever listen to the podcast with Alziri on it? No, but I I always meant to because he said it. Was, I'll drink the stupid water here. He said it was a lot of fun. One one thing that I meant to say when we were talking about crawlers, so I don't feel like a lot of people under, or realize, but Ooh, that water actually tasted wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> a well filled crawler can last for like a year plus. Like if 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 you do all the steps right, like it's it's sealed right, you have the right. Well, amount the nice of CO2 thing is is you can't see through it. Exactly. You know, unlike growlers, which are usually glass. <laughs> Because light is the biggest enemy of, of beer, and well, so yeah. like, well, what, what was it? Boston Lager figured that out, and they put so what? The, behind oxygen. It's oh yeah, that, that, yeah. Well, like, if you Lager, break a seal, you're done. <laughs> uh, a Boston Lager figured it out, and they put higher uh, things on their cartridges of 
you know, yeah. bottle. You but know. still, if your store, if the store it's sitting in is rocking old school like fluorescent lights, and yep. and it's above those those things, it's still gonna Thankfully, light strike it. We don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Spirit World knows what they're doing, but you know, Some not, places, yeah, not everybody's upgraded to yeah, exactly. non fluorescent UV lights. You know, so um, hmm. just pay attention to where your beer's Switch being stored when you're buying LED. it. Yeah, yeah, and like you know. When we close, I shut all of our lights off, so all my beer sits in like the nice, cool dark. We've got the the racks in the middle. Do you talk to him at the night too? I should. Tonight, <laughs> Put a blanket over him. Read, read him a bedtime story. <laughs> Age nicely for those of you that are in bottles on the racks, and for the rest of you, be ready to sell <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> so I've, I've noticed a lot more people, a lot more breweries going to cans than uh, the bottles. And as someone who sells a lot of retail beer, I love that people are going to cans because I'm very much I lean towards cans. Uh, I sell bottles because there's some breweries like. Brews like Lagunitas, cans are probably not ever going to happen. Um, I will say, um, they already, I won't. They have can right now. I mean, they got 12 and never. They're canning more. Yeah. Oh, they are now? Yeah. The so, one can I do like, and I think though, this is Nebraska. A, Nebraska Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah. The big the 360 top. end. They had to fight to make that legal to sell here, oh, didn't they, so when cool. they first started doing it? I won't name names, but there is a couple big breweries that are moving to cans. Deschutes, Odell. Yeah. <laughs> Deschutes is one of them. I'll drop and, them. Well, I mean, and I guess some people have probably seen it. Odell's moving to Kansas, yeah, there's too. Yeah, press releases on, like, crap room business I, and, I like, figured, rebound I, and stuff. So I, I don't ever know, like, what can I leak to the public? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like well, the, maybe uh, we just made the, like, you guys broke the news here. Right? <laughs> and, like, I've seen the new Deschutes cans. They are sweet. I like. I love what they do, though. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to start doing fresh squeezed and 12-pack cans for the summer. That's, That's going to kill it. Yeah. Like, it's... Are you guys ever going to do 12 pack cans? Is that ever a thought for you guys? Uh, we're working on it. Uh, Lions Paul probably be the first one. It's a pretty obvious choice there. Yeah. I mean, a 12 pack of 4.6% Vienna mm, Lager, that, like, that's just an easier thing to grab instead of like, oh, two six packs. Yeah, that, that's so, what So, yeah, like we're working on it. Um, Float down the river. The design, the design guys are literally working on designs. You know, that's so awesome. it's, it's, it's on the roadmap for us. We're also going to do some limited 16 ounce cans um, coming up here this summer nice. too. Nice, I like those. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of 16 ounce cans. Oh really? Uh, there's certain environments where they're like perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I'm on the golf course. Mm -hmm. I'm at like a sporting event or a music concert or whatever. It's less trips up. Yep. You know, the people walking around have them for sale, like yeah. you know, like that, and it's a full pint of beer. Mm -hmm. But for my casual drinking experience, if I'm not at home. I don't like a 16 ounce can because right. at the end of it, it's warm and flat. It doesn't fit in the I, whole koozie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True, I'm, yeah. I'm, sip, I'm sipping on it like a normal beer. And by the time I get done, because of all that sloshing, that bottom's flat, it's it's a little warm. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm at home, 16 ounce is great. You know, pour it into that's a, a, a Nonic pint or something that's got enough room for 16 ounces plus a good, you know, two fingers ahead. Yeah. And uh, I'm ready to go. So. Did, we, did we talk about this new one? Uh, no, so we just uh, cracked another crawler. This is uh, our cellarman, Kyle, um, wanted uh, to brew a Schwartz beer. This is his first run at it. May, um, the, may the Schwartz be with yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're calling it Long Story Schwartz. <laughs> um, uh, oh, I get the reference. Uh, we, we kicked around some fun names of like cargo shorts and jean shorts. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> but uh, nice. May the cargo Schwartz, Schwartz be with been, you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cargo but, Schwartz would have been awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately taken. Uh, yeah. So we, we like to vet all of our names because we don't know where they're going to go. And we're in five states right now with our distribution footprint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we... Is that we, we, pretty much in the Midwest? Yeah, or? so it's South Dakota, Minnesota. Or South Dakota, North Dakota, Western Minnesota, Northwest Iowa, and Nebraska. So, okay. um, but uh, we, in Nebraska being the latest uh, addition to and that. And best, so. of course. Yeah, of course. And <laughs> biggest, right? Like, oh, really? I mean, is it really? Population-wise, you guys are like... I mean, Omaha is a, is like the population of like the rest of our distribution area combined. Wow, even even the Minnesota area, right? We're just in Western Minnesota oh, right okay. now, so right. like not wow. the cities, not even close to the cities yet. Wow, you know, Alexandria, you know, uh, uh, Detroit Lakes, Worthington, Marshall, like those, like those. You probably right. never heard of those towns. Right. Those well, are the biggest towns we're in in Minnesota right question. now. And we were talking about the, um, uh, 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 we were talking earlier about the distribution, and I didn't realize that the. Uh, like it was so regional i thought it was yeah. more state to state but like even within the state you can oh yeah certain so like in south state. dakota we have four distributor partners mm -hmm. well, you know just they all have their own territory um and so i think across the five states we're somewhere at like 11 distributors um that we work with that helps sell our beer and um but yeah uh, uh push it yeah <laughs> but, push it um, but anyway so we try to be really <laughs> conscious about um not stepping on other brewers toes like if mm -hmm. we have We'll, we'll always go to untapped first and like vet potential names that we want to call something. Um, I'd love to see your un, your untapped. Uh, yeah. My <laughs> my account is dead. I don't is I don't like my personal account. Like I don't check in very much stuff. Uh, 
Um, I used to use it more as like a personal beer journal, but that's now what I do too. Yeah, that's, but, yeah, but I use mine for and, and so like if I do check them in now, I seldom give them a rating. Mm-hmm. I'll write. I don't some, I'll write some words. Just more of a I mean, hey, yeah, rating. Just that source. I had this. Yeah, but yeah, because being a brewery owner, like. Like I don't want it to ever seem like I'm diminishing somebody else's craft, right? And uh, so, like, I don't, yeah. I don't really do it. I don't need to do it it's anymore. A, I, can, I have a pretty good memory. I can generally remember having a beer and what I th- thought about it mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. And um, but uh, yeah, so we try to vet those names. Uh, and like Cargo Shorts was uh, Cargo Shorts <laughs> uh, was a great name, but it's taken by a pretty prominent brewery. I can't remember which one now. That at some point we hope that our paths cross. Like we're distributing far enough out that we're in the same territory as them, mm-hmm. and we don't want to be infringing on what they've created. I've got a quick question here from yeah. Blake. Uh, yeah, he's that. wondering what store we're in. Uh, we're Spirit down here World. at Spirit World on yep. uh, 60th and Center Street. Yes, those of you that are joining us that a little late in the podcast, yeah, we're we're doing this live. This is our uh, this is actually our first public live event um, because we've had... Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, Mostly it's Close Encounters of the uh, yeah, so our kind. The, the first one was uh, our vacation where we had our family vacation. We oh, did it was a, great. A it was called there. Time Off. Mm-hmm. We were all on vacation. We That's did a perfect. family vacation. Yeah, well, it was the first time we had our dad trapped in a house. <laughs> and so he was actually on the show. Yeah. So nice. it was great. It was good. And then, uh, then our second one was actually from... Uh, the Barley Boys uh, Brewing, and they uh, we had in it their from garage. their, their yeah. garage. So this is our first public space, actually. Cool, yeah, so. that's awesome. Yeah, we made history. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> exactly. I Excellent. had to make signs. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they're on the front and the back door. Yeah. So we're I see, I see we're, we're drinking. Oh, yep. That one. Yep. yep. There it is. The Schwartz. Is that the one? Short arms. Yep. Like T-Rex. Uh, I feel you. <laughs> so, you. So you can't use the word Schwartz. You had to use. Sh- uh, no, like uh, so, like. So, you so the joke was Schwartz being the style of beer. It's yes. a it's it's a Schwartz beer, gotcha. uh, which is a dark German lager. Mm-hmm. So this is a are lager. You, are you brewing true to style with like? Because I know uh, Germany has the the, the Rhein high school. Yeah, only yeah. only four purity, ingredients. Yeah. Um, right now, all of our production beers. So the Quest has lactose in it, which is an adjunct. Right. Um, but all of our production beers are uh, brewing grain. Like so, true. barley has been uh, barley, wheat, oats. Like those are acceptable. No mm-hmm. rice, no corn. Right. Those mm-hmm. are adjuncts. Um, so all of our core beers are four ingredients, barley, nice. water, yeast, hops. Um, not because we feel we have to, because we like the constraint of trying to create within the bounds of what we have. Styles of and then, yeah. you know, in our tap room, we do stuff with fruit in it. We do, you know, we, we mess around with, you know, we'll put curio, we'll put some fruit in there, we'll put farmhouse, our, our petite saison, we'll do like cherry concentrate or something, you know, like, hmm. you know, we just mess around. Um, but hard to distribute things like that that might re-ferment on a shelf somewhere. Right. Especially um, if you're going to do it in September near um, Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so, uh, so yeah, no, so the so Kyle, our cellarman, uh, who manages all the beer past brewing, you know, and he does a bit of brewing um, on the small system, which is where this came from, he really wanted to make a Schwartz beer, uh, German black lager. And so this is his first go at it. Um, I know he's got some tweaks in mind for the next time he brews it, nice. but I think it t- turned out pretty solid. It's a little I, roasty, little I, chocolatey, little what bit is of that he, dark What does he want to tweak to it? Um, I, just to drop out some of that that deeper roast character. So that's okay. well, drinking, speaking of deep yeah, roast yeah. character, why don't we try to taste <laughs> some of this deep roast character? We get to talking too much apparently. So, but yeah, it's, it's got a, like a nutty uh, oh, aroma oh, to it. Yeah, very malty, malt smooth forward. for for as dark as it is. That's nice and yeah. smooth. So because it is a lager, I think he wants to crisp it up just a little bit more. So it does have gotcha. a bit of that like, graininess, right? Yeah, it's I was going to say the, the cream, it, it does bring yeah. it. Yeah, it is it kind of like a bigger California Commons almost? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere right in the middle of where he wants to be, I think. So I think you can take it to one end of the spectrum, which is further in the direction that it is right now. Or you could try to diminish it, keep the color, keep a bit of the complexity, but still make it drink crisp and lighter like mm-hmm. the lager that it is. And so, but no, great first stab for, from Kyle oh, uh, yeah. at Ferns. It's good so. stuff. Um, but yeah, so these were just fun things we had on tap at the tap room that I thought you guys might enjoy trying because, nice. you know, they're part of we'll just one barrel there. worth of beer that was brewed, right? There's so like, there's, bit left. it doesn't get very far. There was a there was a video I was watching on YouTube, and it was a gal that was interviewing you, and uh, she actually did Blake first, and then she interviewed you, and you were actually in the canning line, and you were explaining the whole canning process, mm-hmm. and you pulled one of the cans off, and you're like, hey, you want a can of beer? And she opened it and cracked. It. I was like. I want to be her right now. <laughs> like, that is odd, like fresh off the canning. Yeah, line. it doesn't that's, literally doesn't get any fresher in a package than that's that. That's amazing. The only time you get it fresher, finished you beer get, is yeah. is right off the bright tank before it goes to package, right? Yeah. So um, we try to do that on tours when we can. So, oh, nice. Uh, we do full brewery tours at the brewery Thursday through 
pull up Saturday. in a truck and you got the bright tank just on the back of the truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that's at the brewery. Yeah, 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 at the brewery two, location on the kidding. north edge of town. Um, off a of cliff in I-90 um, on the north edge of Sioux Falls. Right. Is it 155? What's the highway? That's, it's 155? Well, it's, Cl- it's Cliff Avenue that turns into another highway that I don't yeah. know, but it's Cliff Avenue through Sioux Falls. Yeah. And, right off um, the Interstate 90, though. Yep, it's yep. right across the street from a KOA campground. So this summer, like you can bring oh, your tents, your awesome. camper, whatever, oh, camp, you and walk across Perfect. the street yeah. to the brewery. <laughs> that's that's um, genius. Just watch yeah. out for trains. Uh, no, tra- no trains at that <laughs> oh, brewery. That yeah. <laughs> Just interstate, which is south of us. And you're fine. Right. Um, but uh, Oh, yeah, that was your tap room. That's right. Yeah, the brewery tap room. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's a nice little space. Uh, I mean, not little. I guess it's a 12,000-square-foot warehouse. Is we took over. It was like a speedy delivery, regional career, you know, like UPS, but only in like three states. Mm-hmm. Um, speedy delivery. And we took over their old warehouse. So it's like an innocuous tin building from the outside. And then... Uh, we have about a 1,400 square foot tap room. That's all like barn wood and you know, steam pipe tables. You know, we're, you know, we built those a long time ago now, and uh, we have 12 taps um, at the brewery and uh, kid friendly and all that. Like we talked about, yeah. you know, changing stations in men's and women's room. You know, all the all the things you need as parents. You know, <laughs> we're all parents uh, at the brewery. You know, hey, like my as a parent, I, I like beer. Yeah, so. exactly. And so, but our brewery tour because the production space is about 9,000 square feet. We go grain to glass. We go to the malt room. We talk about the raw materials and the mm-hmm. milling process. Then we talk about the, the mashing and boiling process, fermentation, brighting the beer, packaging the beer, and then barrel aging and all that stuff. It's like a 40-minute tour. That's nice. It doesn't cost anything. Just got to show up and ask the bartender, and the beer the tender. Yeah. yeah, get a beer on the way uh, on the way in so you've got something to drink. And then depending on the day, there might be something that you can taste along the way in the in the tour. Uh but it's a it's a good time. Uh, nice. People seem to enjoy it, um, and uh, well, yeah. And also, you serve uh, dots pretzels. We were talking about that earlier. Mm. That's the uh, pride of North Dakota. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah, lo- love some dots. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little about uh, your expansion. Uh, the the new sixty barrel fermenters that you got. You got yeah. eight now. Yeah. I, so I, we've been slowly adding. Um, so when we first started, because you're growing. Which yeah. Is good. Well, yeah. It is good to grow. Um, and and, and it's Nebraska's the right, right direction. Yeah. 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 Um, so we uh, we started with a thirty barrel brew house, which was pretty uh, aggressive. But mm-hmm. when we we looked at the area and, and uh, Blake and I individually had ideas to start breweries, and then we got introduced and decided to, to join our two visions into one bigger brewery. And, and at the time, there was wasn't a single production brewery within like sixty miles of Sioux Falls, That's which is crazy. the biggest city in the state of South Dakota. That's so crazy. And and so we're like, well, let's let's go bigger. We're gonna think in like fifteen twenty barrel. Go bigger, I mean, go home. We ended up think, we ended up getting a, a pretty good price on a thirty barrel system, and so mm-hmm. we got a thirty barrel brew house, um, and then two thirty barrel fermenters and two sixty barrel fermenters, a thirty barrel bright tank and a sixty barrel bright tank. Let, and the, before we get too yeah. crazy, what for those that are listening that don't know what a thirty barrel system? Yeah, what so is that a barrel to? of beer is thirty one gallons. So thirty barrels of beer produces nine hundred thirty gallons of beer. Um, if that is easier, yeah, or, that's a or, little, so or, or roughly sixty k, ke- like the big full size kegs that you're used to right. seeing at my your college is, kegger. My mouth is watering. Right yeah, now. <laughs> or or um, four, four crawlers. Gallons of <laughs> four, four crawlers is one gallon of beer. Is one gallon. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of crawlers. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, um, so the, yeah. So the thirty barrel brew house, uh, two thirty barrel fermenters, and then two sixty barrel fermenters. We had to brew twice in a day to fill one of those. And then the bright tanks is where you condition and carbonate the beer before packaging. So we have a 30 and a 60 barrel version of that. Uh, so that was where we started a little over three years ago, um, brewing on. And since then, we've added uh, six 60 barrel fermenters. Um, That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So we just put the last two in a few weeks ago. And you you actually have some really cool uh, pictures. If yeah. you go to your website and uh, or in your Facebook page. Yeah. Shout out to, to Evan, who runs our social media and marketing yeah. stuff. Our marketing director Evan. You can um, watch him play Tetris with these things. Yeah, I mean, the the riggers that we use, uh, Orion rigging in Sioux Falls, like just crazy, like. And that like, was one. Like you, they show you one getting in there, and you have. We, had, we yeah, six. Yeah, and uh, well, yeah. Then it's just it's the the sixty barrel fermenters are fourteen and a half feet tall when they're sitting upright. Right. They come in laying on their side mm-hmm. um, because our garage doors are only fourteen feet tall, <laughs> and so they can't bring them in straight. They have to bring them in. Oh, hit oh, my good. mic. That's they, right. they can't bring them in straight, so like on their like straight up, already upright, and then there's like pipes and stuff on the ceiling, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you, like so you have to bring them in their side and then like sort of lift them up into place. The problem is, uh, granted, I don't have an right. event tonight because everyone's going to extreme, so like yeah, 
if I had an event, that means I can't go to Extreme, mm-hmm. and I actually get to go this year because I, oh, yeah. I had to wear it. <laughs> so, so you're, so you're going to be there tonight? Oh, yeah. The, yep. nice. um, I'm, I'm super stoked. Um, they released the, you know, the, the, the list of what everyone's pouring a couple days ago, so I'm, I, I was looking at it, I'm like, there's plenty of stuff here I haven't had. There's Where could you I, find that list? Um, I'm pretty sure, sure on their it's website. on Beertopia's Facebook website. page. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out because yeah, they're, the they're the ones yeah. hosting it. They're the ones hosting it. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's them and Crescent Moon. Don't quote me on that. but I, Well, I, they own both. It's be- Well, yeah. yeah. I, 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 basically, it's Beer Corner, I think, that's putting on right. Extreme. So, but yeah, th- this is my first time going to Extreme. Um, I had to work last year, so I didn't get to go. So oh. I'm, I'm super stoked to go this year. So I, well, I mean, we'll, we'll be there, so we'll yeah. <laughs> compare have notes to, later. I just wish it would be a little warmer because yeah, I know there's going to be a line outside waiting to get in. And that's why I'm not going to like four. Like, I was going to say, <laughs> we, I wonder if we skip the line afterwards and just show up a little late just to do yeah, like, that so we don't stand outside. We'll see. I know that like when you show up early, that sometimes those breweries have like, oh, we're only going to pour this from 3 to 3.30. Like, I, I don't care. Right, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well, and, and they got all the guys, the, the, the VIPs, the bottom, yeah, the, the, two, the, the, one, the one hour earlier. So yeah, the, the, two. the VIP people will probably eat up most of like the rare stuff. It's mm-hmm. like if... It, and if, if I miss things, it's just beer. It's going to come around again. I'm right. not overly worried about it. <laughs> and if it went well, they'll produce more. Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. You know? Well, and thankfully, being here at Spirit World, like, most of the time when a brewery releases something cool and mm-hmm. it comes to Nebraska, we usually get it. So, like, that gives me an opportunity, like, oh, well, I can buy a bottle. Or, right. You know, yeah. I, I definitely frequent some of these high V's. I, I go to Beer Toby every so often. Like, those places get it, too. It's like, if I don't get it here, I can probably go find it somewhere. You can get it anywhere. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you got to travel. It yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to go all the way to Council Bluffs to the Mall of the Bluffs. Yeah, you know, uh, I used to be in Council Bluffs once a week, and I almost always stopped in a Mall of the Bluffs. Yeah. But I was always going in there for, like, basically, like, like just a couple things. Like, I always went to go get Uinta, but now they're here. Yeah. And then I went in there to get Top and Goliath. But now they're here too, so like I don't yeah. really have to go, go there, there as anymore. much anymore. Like, well, it, it was the the thing was with the Mall of Bluffs IB is uh, those who are watching us from afar and don't know about Omaha's, uh, you know, where we are at in Omaha. Uh, Council Bluffs is just right across the river. I it's mean, a it's ten minute, ten minute drive from ten here. minute drive from here. Yeah, but the thing is, it's a whole another state. Yep. So they've got a whole different cycle of beers. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, like you know, they get Stillwater and Evil Twin stuff, and like mm-hmm. so we get Stillwater and Evil Twin here, but they get stuff that we don't see. Well, you guys aren't in Iowa, so right? So oh, no, we, we're in Northwest Iowa and Council oh. Bluffs. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We just did a tap take over at Barley's not too long ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very so, cool. So like. When I go in there now, like there's there's still stuff they've got that I can't get. Like you know they got Exile, they got Schlafly, um, Left Hand. There's there's stuff there that well, I can't get. Well, their beer get. cooler is also twice the size of your beer cooler. Don't hate. Nice. <laughs> hey 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 hey! You got a good selection over here though. I try my best. Exactly. You got did, what you need. Uh, yeah. All the yeah. facings of person. I did want to talk a little bit about. <laughs> you guys your, usually uh, have all five facings here because yeah. they all sell really well for me. <laughs> I did want to talk a little bit about your roots on uh, how you guys got together because uh, you guys are both home brewers. Yep. And uh, so from that, t- talk about some of the challenges moving from being a home brewer to actually opening a brewery. Because I know there's a lot of guys that are home brewers. They're like, oh, we should totally open a brewery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- no, you shouldn't. I, I mean, mean they're, 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 you, you should if you got it. If, if, if you have you, the if, product. If, but, it, well, yeah. Not even that. You should if you really like to work. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's, like it's not all glitz from the glamour, outside right? in. It's like yeah, it's oh, just you know, you just make beer all day. Like so, no, so clean. little. You got to clean all day. Yeah. Right? Not, so not like ever. the old adage I like to say is, beer. Uh, you know, brewing beer is ninety percent cleaning, ten mm-hmm. percent paperwork, mm-hmm. and somewhere in the middle of the beer gets made. <laughs> that's a, yeah. That's a really good adage. Yeah. Like, like unfortunately, uh, not everybody could be Han Bergeria and just be a glorified homebrew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so no. Uh, uh, I mean, the transition, uh, so scaling recipes, things like that. Luckily, so we... how you got together. And then, oh, yeah, yeah it's like the whole thing. Yeah, all right. yeah, let's talk a little um, bit about the All right, roots, so, um, yeah, so my background is software engineering, mm-hmm. uh, did all that. Which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you'll find, I think, most brewers or brewery owners, brewers, um, started somewhere either in technology, mm-hmm. like art, or not art, like science, math, like somewhere over there, engineering, mm-hmm. or artists. Oh, okay. Like those are the sort of the polar ends of those spectrums, so because, right? Because cooking is a very, like, you have to be very technical, and brewing also, yeah. you have to be well, very both. technical. Or you can be, like, the art, artist person that sort of just understands and that just goes with the right. way doesn't really, under, like, 
care to dig into the molecular right. gastronomy I, side I of it. This, but I, like, I want this flavor profile. Yeah, I know you when I cook happen. everything with butter, it's delicious. Yeah. You know, like whatever. <laughs> um, and garlic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, so there's like that end of the spectrum, right? So I come from the math and science side. Um, you know, that's my background. Um, and when I was living up in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, mm. I, um, I, some friends and I were just drinking at Old Chicago every like every other day and doing world beer tours and drinking all these like beers that we'd never had before. So how many do you have under your belt? Like three and a half. Wow. In, That's pretty impressive. <laughs> a lot of beers. In like a year and a half. Nice. Um, I haven't done one in like a decade. <laughs> um, maybe a little less. But yeah. So uh, we were, were privileged back then to live in Minneapolis, St. Paul with two of the best homebrew stores in the country. Midwest Homebrewing Supplies and Northern Brewer. Mm-hmm. Um, now owned by Anheuser-Busch. Um, <laughs> you, you should check, yeah, while you're here, you should check out the home brewing supply yeah, store that we go to. It's uh, um, really nice. But they were there, Patriot? and we could. Is that what it is? Patriot, Patriot Homebrew. Yeah, yeah, nice. They, I bought a lot of stuff for our kegerator. Nice. It mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good to have. We have good a guys. small little local shop, Taylor's Pantry and Steins and Vines, both in Sioux Falls, that are great little independent mom pop mm-hmm. like shops where you can get all your have, homebrew stuff. Uh, they have two 30 gallon kettles in the back that you can actually rent if yeah. you're a homebrewer. So if you want to expand your five gallon, that's cool. Thirty gallon. That's cool. Or get some get some of your other brewing buddies together to brew one bigger batch. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yep. Um, but no, so... Uh, now I'm uh, thinking. <laughs> yeah, so we lived close uh, to these... And like after a few pints one night, it was just like, you guys ever thought about you know making our own beer? And like, so we went, pulled our money, bought like the deluxe homebrew kit and just started going. And very quickly became... I was the only one who wanted to care, like cared about brewing beer mm-hmm. and they just kind of wanted to drink it. And so, uh, you know, like it just sort of evolved into me making beer and them drinking it and that was fine. And uh, so I became a member of the Minnesota Homebrewers Association, uh, went through a class and became BJC certified for beer judging, judging beer yeah. certification um, program. Just. Yep, beer judges certification program, BJCP. Yeah. Um, and so I got that and sort of started taking my hobbies more seriously. I was like, I want to brew true to style beers so that I can prove that I know the base, like the building blocks. And then from there I can go wherever. Go right? Crazy. Yeah. And so like, I just kind of like with that analytical and like the tasting knowledge that I now had after going through the class and like getting certified with the BJCP, like understanding it, I just took my hobby and just uh, kind of accelerated it because mm-hmm. I was more focused. And, um, I got married in 2012 and my wife's from the Sioux Falls, Brandon area. And, uh, more shy paw. Well, I, I got two more shy giants here. We oh, got gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You got to roll through these guys yet. Fair enough. <laughs> you won't. You're scared. Um, <laughs> I'm not. But uh, so we, uh, uh, you know, at the end of my time up in the Twin Cities, I was already kicking around like a little business plan for opening a brewery in the Twin mm-hmm. Cities because that's where I lived. And I worked for, you know, a big Fortune 50 company up there. I, mean, I was going to split this one. And uh, <laughs> there's actually a half one right here. Oh, there's uh, still half in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, then. Um, but... Uh, Anyways, uh, so I moved to Sioux Falls, um, where my wife's from, and looked around. I was like, "There's no breweries here." So I dust off my business plan. I had, you know, plans to go like the SBA score, like try to, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a veteran, uh, you know, and, and like so there's programs there. I was just gonna like do yeah. this thing, do whatever I could afford, do like figure out what I could get for money, and like mm-hmm. make it that size. That was my plan. And um, and meanwhile, I'm brewing, I'm home brewing all the beer for my upcoming brother-in-law's wedding because he was having it in nice. the barn so we could have whatever beer he wanted. Yep. And so, like, I'm home brewing 200 gallons of beer, like 10 gallons at a time because mm-hmm. that's what my, like, kegel system could do. And um, he's like, my buddy Blake, who's I went to Augustana with, he's going to brewing school this winter, and he's going to open a brewery. You guys should meet. I was like, yeah, bring him out. And we start brewing together, compar- comparing notes, talking back and forth, like sort of comparing business plans. And he left for brewing school at UC Davis um, to get his master brewer certification came back home and uh we're still meeting like every month and looking at our business plans and like trying to figure out like you know so you know what's the next step yeah what are we doing are we doing you know and like just kind of uh, one day it was like you know, we should just combine these build a one bigger one mm-hmm. instead of just being collegial and building two small ones that are sort of you know not to, you know one business um and so when we did that that sort of elevated it to a bigger project and and for instance was born um, and we brewed for the first year in his parents' garage on the same one barrel system we use nice. today, which a know, lot of startups just, came from yeah, garages. Exactly. Um, and so we, uh, um, you know, farmhouse and IPA came from those garage recipes, you nice. know, like that's the, the same beer we've been brewing, um, for, you know, over four years now. Like yeah. I said, the, the small batches you guys do, those one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, five gallon, uh, batches that you guys do, uh, they tend to be... No, the the gallon, the small, the really small, like for home brewing, 
Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Those tend to be, you know, something yeah. of, the, of notoriety. Yeah. And luckily, this day and age, we have great software, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, we use Beersmith still. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got um, it on my phone. Yeah, yeah so, like... Right. And did you yeah. know, um, so we were at uh, the Barley Boys Brewing, and um, I also have uh, an Amazon Echo. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you have a dot... Alexa. It, yeah, so you can actually use that. Uh, it's called a... Uh, uh, crap, I can't think of a, the actual name right up Alexa, here. play Blue Man Group. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, now everybody's yeah, got that if point. If they're listening to this on their Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can actually uh, have her learn something, and that she can actually do like your uh, specific gravity. She can get, uh, do final gravity, find your alcohol content, and she can do all of that. Yeah, uh, that's just cool. Wow. Totally. Yeah. 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 All you got to do is ask her. Yeah. yeah. So, that's great. But, but she has to learn that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of uh, what that actually is. Uh, but yeah, she can learn it, yeah. which is really well, cool. Well, he said, uh, Alexa, what's my alcohol content? Yeah, and That's she said, what's saying. your specific gravity? What's your beginning gravity? What's your final gravity? And yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then she's got like, it oh, figured yeah. out. Yeah, it's it's really so like the software is really cool, yeah. but like technology is changing. Right. So you know we're talking about now transitioning from home brewers to production, uh, professional brewing, production brewing. Right. Um, the software was funding. pretty key. Right. Oh well, yeah, funding. <laughs> yeah, obviously, so we have one investor and a really understanding bank. Mm-hmm. Right. So the the bank really bought into our vision. Um, we were the only one doing it in that area, like I said. Right. And so they took a chance 60 on us. Sixty miles is that we said? Yeah, it was like a forty-five to sixty mile That's radius insane. around Sioux Falls, which is the like. The hub. I mean, yeah, that's the, the large population of South Dakota. So South Dakota is under 800,000 people in the entire state. Mm-hmm. Um, and within like 30 miles of Sioux Falls, there's like 450,000 people. It's like over half the state's population in that bottom corner of it's the kind state. Of, well, Nebraska is the same way. Yeah. I mean, we're like a million nine, I think almost two million people. But I think we have a million just in the greater in Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, yeah. The greater Coming Omaha, back yeah. from Montana, I hit a herd of beers. Uh, beers. <laughs> herd, herd of deers. <laughs> Deers? Uh, yeah. Is that like bears with antlers? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. The, the original story that he told me was he hit a flock of deer. I was like, what were they flying low? I mean, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Also, bears with antlers, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> a bear and a deer? It's a beer. Yeah, that still sounds oh, yes, terrifying. Yeah. I, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like the jackalope version, but yes, the yeah. beer. Yeah. Anyway, my car was wrecked and it was horrible. But yeah, came up over a hill doing 90 miles an hour on I 90. And uh, hit a Ironic. herd of deers. Yeah, in South Dakota? It's South Dakota. <laughs> yeah, well, the speed limit is 80 on the interstate, so we weren't even speeding that much. <laughs> yeah, just by 10. It's not well, a big deal. What I, what I noticed on I-90. coming out of Montana. There's no speed limit. Well, yeah. it wasn't no speed limit. Yeah. There. <laughs> like on I-90, I was doing like 81. Yeah. Like I had the, I was not in anywhere. I wasn't getting anywhere fast. I was like, you know, I'm just going to hit the 81. Yeah. And I was passing everybody. Yeah. You know, like everybody was doing like 70, 75. I'm like, Depends on where you were at in the state. I guess. Because, because west, like, west of Rapid City, they actually don't – it. it like they have a lower speed limit. Well, that's well. I was in. I went to the Rapid City Sturgis area. Right. Um, but so yeah. if you were west of Rapid, not it no, is not eighty mile an hour speed. I limit. was like four miles west of Rapid. Uh, okay. So I was yeah. at the national. It, cemetery dro- it drops to sixty five at Rapid. Yes. And it goes yes. up to seventy, but not eighty. Right. Yeah. But no. Yeah. Out, out of Rapid yeah. City. I was, After I was very having surprised. these two and going back to this, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. Well, it's warmed up a little bit, so yeah. it's, it's expressing itself mm-hmm. a little it bit more. It is expressing yeah. itself a little more. That's why, like, you know, I'm kind of happy there's still half a can left. Like, who knows what that's going to taste yeah. like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In mm-hmm. 20 minutes. It's like grab bag. Like, yeah, grab bag. <laughs> there you go. Let's, yeah. uh, let's spend a couple minutes because uh, we're getting close to the hour and a half range. Let's, uh, yeah. Can we spend a couple minutes on maybe some uh, tips for going to a beer fest? Ooh, because we do have I, that yeah, we were, we're talking about that. This is your first extreme beer fest. It's my first as well because mm-hmm. this is the first time we've been down here while well, during a extreme beer fest, like mm-hmm. distributed here, like able able, able to come here. Right. Um, we've done Nebraska beer fest a few times. I bought this shirt the last beer fest. All right, you got to get Dickie's uh, work shirt. That's that's <laughs> one <go>. one <laughs> way to let people know you know what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's tap life, and yeah. then on the back side that says uh, there are no weak beer, just weak men. Uh huh. All oh, right. That's so true. <laughs> Uh, I decided, or I mean, women. I mean, it's I mean, since it's, kinda... it's a beer fest, and I'm part of the distribution, not not distribution, but I'm part of like the retail side. I'm like, I have to go neutral, so I'm yeah. not going to rep uh, a brewery. Yeah. He's going to take his hat off too, though. No, I'm going to wear a Crooked <laughs> Stave hat because I don't oh, think Crooked right. Stave is pouring today. Okay. so I'm going to go neutral. Right. They pour you, at, you have to wear they pour your, at Nebraska yeah. beer fest though. Well, yeah, but they, I, I'm, I don't think Crooked Stave pours oh, here. I know Matt pours a lot of stuff, but I don't think he sure. pours any Crooked Stave. Oh, and I said it. that wrong, too. There, there are no strong beers, just weak men. That's uh-huh. what it is. Fair enough. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep it neutral because I love all the breweries that I can get in Nebraska, yeah, right. and I want to show them all equal love, and I don't want to, like... But that does speak to, like, what you can wear to a beer fest. Like, 
sport your brewery gear, man. Well, yeah, because like, like my girlfriend's crazy. gonna wear distill because she yeah. loves their wild sour series. I'm like, yeah, absolutely, wear that then. Like, yeah, I I'm just gonna re- wear rep what you love. It's sort of your badge of like, here's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. um, you know like I'm coming in with this, mm-hmm. um, or don't do it, don't do anything, <laughs> whatever you want to do. I'm gonna uh, wear a Bill Cosby sweater because it's freezing outside. <laughs> Plus, a lot we'll of my brewery that shirts are dirty record. from this week because You're gonna like, get so hot in the uh, the actual <laughs> arena though. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, tied around my waist. We talked about <laughs> we talked about it briefly earlier. Like around hydrate, you should hydrate. If you, if you haven't drank like a liter <laughs> or two of water later. already oh, yeah. today, like get on it. Get water in yes. you. Yeah. Make um, sure you eat. From yeah. what I understand, get you, some some bread, some starchy, some stuff. That I had Burger put, King this morning. There you go. Oh, boy. So you want some get bread? The grease in there, and put a little grease in there. So it's gonna yep. break that. It is break good. it down yep. a little bit for they you. They actually have water stations. Any chance you throughout. can get get some bacon in you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not, just like, a that's just a life fact. Like that's <laughs> like anytime yes. bacon, bacon. Yeah. get more bacon. Have Do not seen, ever skimp on the water. R- no, absolutely like, not. Never. Yeah. Like if you if you if you haven't gone for like a session like four hours of drinking straight. It's going to go to your head quick. Oh, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, they're little glasses, but when you're it's little glasses, but it's every you're three continue, minutes, you're and you're going to be yeah. drinking a couple pints an hour well, at that rate. Exactly. Every every five beers that you have out of these little small glasses is one beer. But or depending on the alcohol four, content, or like, even four. If somebody's yeah. pouring you a ten, like us, we're going to be pouring a ten point four percent stout, and I pour you two ounces of it. That's mm-hmm. almost a Bud Light. Yeah, right. Yeah, for two <laughs> ounces. Yeah, most of, the, most of the beers at Extreme. I mean, look at the list. So it, the the list this year isn't quite as strong as it has been. Yeah, because there's there's definitely some stuff that you know because. Normally, not when I hear about extreme, twelve percent, yeah. Normally, when you hear about extreme, everyone's like, "Oh, yo, most of the beers are over seven percent." That's not the case this year. Yeah, but yeah. still, a good chunk of them are still yeah. over right. that much. Yeah, but yeah, just just I don't want to say pace yourself because that's to each their own. Mm-hmm. But just drink water. Like, yeah. if you if this is your first time Hydrate. going for a long period of drinking between like, between yeah, just locations, like, yeah. There's rinse stations set up at almost all good fests, mm-hmm. and I assume they'll have them there. Yes, like oh, yeah. after you finish one beer, fill that. Sample cup up with water. Drink it. And get your next beer. One, know, you're rinsing your glass out. It. It's two, water. Two, <laughs> you're 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 getting some. some well, and you'll have to go b- the bathroom more often, but that's yeah. fine. Totally fine. Uh, one of uh, did you ever see that Esquire um, uh, article on uh, Jim Coach or Jim Koch from um, Sam Adams? And he was talking about how to drink all day without getting drunk. Such BS. Well, <laughs> the, the the yeast. If yeast consumed alcohol, how would we ever make beer? What, what it, bring, it breaks it down, is what he says. How would we ever make beer? I have no idea. He is, it's BS. Is it really? Yeah. I've tried it, and it actually worked for me. So To just make you gassy? I mean, if no, if I drink all day, I usually end up stopping at like eight or nine because I'm like, eh, I'm probably mm-hmm. good. Now. I just, I don't. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. So he, he so he, what he's referring to is this article that Jim Cook from Sam, Ad, Sam Adams, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Boston Beer Company. Uh, had some article where he said he takes like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of, teaspoon. of active dry yeast mm-hmm. um, before he goes for a long period of drinking. Mm-hmm. And well, it, per beer is what he said, which is a lot. Oh yeah, of what, yeah of yeast, <laughs> whatever it was, and like maybe it just makes it so you can't consume anymore because you're so full of gas from all the yeast yeah. fermenting in yeah. your stomach. I don't yeah. know, but like, so the the same. I think he said active dry yeast, right? It's yeah. a bread baker's yeast, still Saccharomyces, yeah, uh, still the same yeast family that we brew beer with. Yeah. If it was breaking down alcohol. How like, would we make actual beer? Yeah, how would we be making beer? that's what it does. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a fair point. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it did, it, like, when I did it, I, I, like, felt no ill effects from it. So, no, he doesn't. Mental say, game is strong. It could be. It could be. It could be the <laughs> Mind over game. matter. I mean, you also said you have the liver of an Olympian. So I that, do. That, that might help you, well, too. It's well trained. <laughs> yeah. Well trained. So, well-trained. yeah, food, hydration, like, just know yeah. your know don't your be, limits. Don't, don't be, be carried away. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. Be stupid. Like yeah, it's going stupid. for like four hours, and like you got plenty of time. You to, don't have like, to drink everything in the first it, hour, and right. you don't no. have to drink everything no. there. Like go pick and choose what you think is the like the one that looks the most appealing to you at each of the breweries booths, mm-hmm. and then circle back at the ones that stood out as a brewery that brews something Absolutely. you like, and like and go, try go dive try, in. Try going to breweries that you've never been to before. Oh yeah, if you can get it all the time down the road, why? Why? I mean, you know what they do. Well, I'm a huge fan of of drinking IPAs and all that stuff. So my palate after, you know, drinking 8, 10, 12 IPAs, I'm like, Ugh, I, gotta, I have to get something else besides an IPA in my belly. Not just water, some food or something. You know, yeah. pretzels, peanuts, things of that nature. Cracker Jacks. Yep. Cracker Cracker Jacks. I think we're going to uh, wrap this episode yeah. up here. and uh, but uh, Even though yeah. we had to restart three times on yeah. Facebook Live. But <laughs> the audio, yeah, the audio will be fine. So yeah, exactly. uh, make sure to uh, take it. Remember to hit save. Yes. So what happens when you come to a new, like... I, 
Yeah, the new spot. definitely yes. this one I have to hit save on. Yes, <laughs> exactly. All right, well, thank you for joining us. We have been uh, joined by Alex from Spirit World. We've been dra- joined by Derek from Ferns and Brewing yeah, Company. Yeah, it was a pleasure, you guys. Yeah, yeah thank awesome. you guys Find for coming. Find us online. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do your, plug. Just, yeah. do your plug. Just plug it a little bit. Find us online, yeah. Ferns and Brewing on Facebook and Twitter, Ferns and on Instagram, and yep. Fernson.com. Or uh, find Fernson. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag find Fernson. Yep. Yep. So, well, thank you for joining us. My name's been Brian. I'm Britt. I'm Derek. Alex. All right. Thanks for joining us.